Welcome to our discussion on chi-square tests, the uh, goodness of fit versus contingency tables. First off, I know that uh, the idea of a chi-square can be confusing, so I wanted to spend some time uh, just describing what a chi-square test does, show you the difference between the two types of chi-square tests, and show you, more importantly, their similarities, give you a couple simple examples, and then show you how to compute the actual values in StatCrunch. Okay, so I put these side by side so you can see how similar they are, right? By definition, a goodness of fit test just tests the hypothesis that you have some observed frequency distribution and you want to see if it fits some claimed distribution. Whereas a contingency table, or what's called sometimes a two-way frequency table, is kind of the same thing of the difference between a one-way ANOVA and a two-way ANOVA. With the two-way frequency table, or what's called a contingency table, you have uh, frequency counts that are categorized two ways. So look down at the bottom, and you can see here's a couple examples of uh, a regular goodness of fit. In this first example, we're testing whether or not um, male employees have a different distribution to you know, the days of the week that they call in sick or are absent from work versus female employees. So we're comparing this distribution of numbers, the 80 through 79, to this distribution of numbers, the 44 to 41. You'll notice that you have two different totals, right? So you went out and just randomly selected some employees uh, from your uh, company and you got 300 males and 200 females because it seems that you have more males than females working for your company. And the nice thing about these is they don't have to be the same totals. They can be and you could force them to be, right? You could go out in your company and you could first put all of your employees categorized by gender and then pick randomly 200 of each, but then that wouldn't be a true random sample. That would be, do you remember what, what sampling technique that is? If you first group your your stuff into categories or what are called strata, right? This is a, that would be a stratified uh, random sample where you first put them in strata, right? You Male versus female. But we didn't do that. We just randomly grabbed them and they're two different amounts. Now this is going to make computing of the uh, chi-square a little tricky in StatCrunch, but it's still uh, easily doable. Here's an even more straightforward example. Benford's law is a law that came about from observation that if you take a look at uh, numbers, multi-digit numbers, and you count up the number of times that a number ends with one, two, three, all the way up to nine, right? So it's the last digit. I'm sorry, it's the leading digit, not the last one. The leading digit in any number. You'll see that 30% of the time numbers start with one, and then 17.6 they start with a two, and so on and so forth. So these are for anytime you have numbers that are just um, randomly generated. This is the distribution of leading digits. And then you can use this law to uh, test to see if uh, things are fraudulent. If you look at a bunch of checks written, um, if you see an unusual distribution of the leading digit of the money amount, chances are uh, they were created fraudulently. Like human beings will tend to try and create even spreads and so you'll see numbers that are kind of more evenly spread out and so we could test this distribution of numbers versus this distribution of numbers and again we'll we'll talk about how that's done and then here's a two-way contingency table where we went and looked at a bunch of patients who had um, some sort of injury to their foot and the different ways that those injuries were uh, treated and then whether or not it was successful, i.e. whether or not after a certain amount of time they were better or, or not. And these are the four different categories and then whether they had success or failure, right? So 54 people who had surgery got better, 12 didn't. 41 people who had a weight-bearing cast got better, but 51 who had it didn't. So you can see that your data are just people who had a bad foot and were treated for that bad foot and then they were categorized two ways they were categorized versus did they get better did they not get better and then 
by the ways in which they were treated. So hopefully you can st start to see the difference between a one-way goodness of fit and a two-way goodness of fit. Now if you look at the generalities of uh, the two tests, you can see that they're very similar. You have the same um, variables. O is your observed frequency, E is your expected frequency, R is the number of rows in your table, right? C is the number of columns. That's the only difference over here. We have K is the number of different categories, right? So for this case we would have five. And then N is the total number of trials um, or the, the sample, right? So N would be, you know, 300 for this one or 200 for this one. Our requirements, randomly selected, randomly selected, right? Data consists of frequency counts, frequency counts. For each category, the expected frequency is at least five. Expected frequency, not observed frequencies, right? So we go, we'd have to calculate expected frequencies and make sure these are all above five. For every cell, the expected frequency is at least five. So you can see a lot of the same requirements. If we jump down here, here's our test statistic. Observe minus expected squared over expected. Observe minus expected. So, sorry, so it's the same exact thing, right? The only difference is when we have rows and columns, your expected is um, calculated slightly different. For these, the expected is, well, it's if we're comparing each, then these are kind of our expected, but we have to do a little math to it. These would be our observed frequencies, and then these would be our expected distributions. Okay, the null is that everything's the same, right? That the um, the frequency counts agree with the claim distribution just means that what we see in this row is a, a, a more or less mirror of what we see in the other row. For a two-way, our null hypothesis is that the variables are independent, meaning that there's no difference between the columns or the rows, right? That the row doesn't have an effect on the columns. We'll get to that in a second. Over here for our alternative, the frequency counts do not agree, right? So it's they agree versus they do not agree. Here it's they're independent versus they are dependent. Dependent just means that the column variable, i.e. success versus failure, right? So the way that we um, categorize our data vertically is somehow tied to or influenced by or related to how we categorize our variable horizontally. So remember the vertical category was whether or not the surgery or the technique was successful. And then the horizontal categoriz categorization was just the type of technique they used to hopefully fix the problem with their foot. If those two things are truly independent, then that means that um, whether you get better or don't has no bearing on the type of treatment you're given. It basically just is random chance no matter which treatment you get as to whether or not you get better. Or there's something else that is so overwhelmingly um, influential on whether or not you get better that it overrides all these things. So like let's just say that uh, the, the power of positive thinking was so powerful in human beings that it doesn't matter which treatment you give them, a certain percentage are just always going to get better. And so you wouldn't see a big difference in the spread between success and failure across these four things because they really had no bearing. Uh, and something you could think about that would be like if you were giving people um, echinacea um, versus vitamin C versus a placebo to try and treat the common cold. Studies have shown that echinacea and vitamin C have zero effect on uh, getting better when you catch a cold. So when you ran the numbers for those two, you would see no difference between echinacea vitamin C and uh, placebo because getting better or not getting better was really just determined by your immune system, how healthy you were, you know, those types of things. Okay, so those are the differences between the two tests and we'll get into the nuances more later but I wanted to just give you a, a simple uh, quick example of how the two differ so you can be thinking about when to use one versus the other. And then very quickly if we wanted to figure out some actual answers in StatCrunch. Here are the mail, 
here are the female and then what I've done here is I've computed relative male and relative female all I did was I took these male numbers and then I turned them into percentages right so if you remember the total was 300 so if you take 80 and divide it by 300 26.6 .6, that means there's roughly 26.7 percent of males were absent on Monday whereas 15.6 were absent on Tuesday, 14 on Wednesday, and so on and so forth. Did the same thing for the female. The reason why is because to run a chi-square goodness of te uh, goodness of fit, and to do it, you go stat, right? Goodness of fit, chi-square. It asks for where are the observed. All right, so I'm going to start with the males as the observed, and then where are your expected. The nice thing about this is. If you just want to test whether or not males um, are absent on uh, with the different frequencies for the different days of the week, you know, like you think they're they're absent more on Mondays and Fridays, then all you have to do is tick here, and it computes it as if the observed are just an equal distribution uh, across the five days of the week, and then if you compute, you would get this one down here, and you'll see that the uh, the expected are now all equally 60 because there were 300 total so if they were even there would be 60 on each day. I did the same thing um, over here with the, the women they would have been evenly spread at 40 per day. And then what I did here is I compared um, men to women just um, as they sit. Right, um, with observed and expected. And there's some weird things that happen with these. Here I compared um, men, relative men to relative female, right? So I looked at this one versus this one. And over here, my observed were female, my expected were relative male. Different ways of comparing them, you can see different p values, and we'll talk about these later. Don't be concerned with that so far. Uh, right now, you'll you know, deal with that later. And then for um, the contingency table version, the, the second, the weight bearing cast and surgery and all that stuff, you go stat, tables, contingency table, with summary, right? Because I know that feels like that's data, but it's not. Data would be raw data where you actually just had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, rows of data and then each was categorized. Was it a success? Was it a failure? Did they have surgery? Did they have this? Uh, but we don't have that. We have summary. You have to select the columns where your um, numbers are. right? And you can see that those are successes and failures. So if you go success, hold down control, failure, and then you have to tell it where the row labels are. And the row labels are right here, right next to it. You can't really read it anymore, but it's called treatment. Um, for this table, I asked it to give us a uh, row, column, and total percent, and then compute, and you can see I get the same thing. I'll get rid of this so it's out of our way. And now, this is what we would look at to see what's going on. Down here is our p-value. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because we will deal with this thing more in depth later. This was just an introduction to the difference between the two and then how you can run it and then we'll deal with analyzing it in other videos. Okay, hope that helps.